Grant, obviously massively successful season for the team. What does it mean to you to be captain of such a historic Norwich City team? No, I mean, for me personally, obviously, it's, uh, you know, it's been a really sort of proud season for myself, um, you know, just to, just to be part of it. Um, you know, the club means so much to everybody here, so, um, you know, really proud to be part of it. What do you feel have been the key ingredients to success this season? Um, it's, it's tough to answer that. It's tough to really put your finger on it. Um, and I think the lads, uh, you know, sort of attitude and how we've approached it, um, you know, mentality going in every week. We know that, um, you know, if we turn up with the right attitude, then you know we've got we've got a good chance, and we've kept that going. We've, um, you know, we've been on. We've had periods of the season where we went on, you know, runs and won, you know, four, five, six, nine games on the trot, whatever it is, and um, you know, most of them have came after we've had a little setback or whatever so you know I think that shows uh, the character that's in within the group. And not many teams bounce back after relegation as champions of the championship so how impressive is that shift in sort of mindset you know going from you know losing a lot of games last season to winning what what is it 29 league games now on course for 30? Yeah it's difficult and um, you know sometimes that's a that's the hardest part you know that 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 shift in the mindset of um, you know, being underdogs every week and knowing that you're, you know, it's got, to, it's got to be a struggle to, you know, to pick up points to, you know, the pressure being on you to being the favourites every week. You know, it's tough to sh to change that mindset, but you know, I think the lads have done done really well, and um, you know, I think for right for the start of the season, um, you know, w we've got it right here in terms of, you know, there's no egos in the dressing room. I think the lads, um, you know, are, are all on the same page and are all pulling in the, you know, in the same direction and. Um, you know that's a big part of being successful. Mm. And it's clear we've tightened things up defensively this season. When you look at, you know, the last time we went up, it was very much a we score, you score three, we score four, and quite a few of the games. But definitely this season, things have been a lot tighter defensively. What, what would you put that down to? Um, well, I think m most of the lads have been here for a bit longer, played together for a bit longer. Um, so I think that helps. You know, you, we're always learning, we're always looking to improve, um, you know, you know what the boss demands of us, so I think that's probably, you know, a, a big part of it and I think probably as well the lads that have came in have, you know, made a bit of difference. Um, you know, obviously Gibble's done really well when he's, you know, when he, when he was fit, when he's played. Um, and Skippy as well, you know, Skippy's, he's near enough played every game, hasn't he? And, um, you know, he's, you know, brought a different side to, um, you know, that defensive midfield role or that deeper line midfield role, I think he's been outstanding. So, you know, a number of things. Um, but no, it's as a centre back, you know, it's your defensive record is sort of what you pride yourself on. So, um, you know, we're, we're happy with how it's went, but still again, you know, I think there's there's games and there's goals where we could have done better with. So, you know, we'll keep looking to improve. And going forward as well, you know, this team's renowned for his attacking flair and the amount of goals and chances we create. What What can you say about the stuff that the lads are showing at the top end of the pitch, Emmy, Timu, Todd, all the guys. What, what can you say about what yeah, they're showing? Yeah, no, I think I think we know that as well, and that's you know why it's been so important to to get the defensive right uh, side of it right because we're you know the quality we've got at the front end of the pitch. It's um, you know is really top quality, and we know that we can you know we can hurt teams, and we're always going to um, you know create chances, and more often than not, the lads will take them. So um, you know it's it, it's nice to have that on your side. That, you know when you you're out there on a Saturday, whenever it is, and you can see that quality you've got going forward. Uh, you know, it makes a difference. And you've mentioned him already, but Ben Gibson obviously come in, and the bulk of your performances this season have been alongside him and as part of the back two. What, what can you say about his influence on the pitch and off the pitch? Because a lot of people say how important he is off the pitch in terms of set, getting the right mindset into the lads as well. Yeah, no, definitely, and it's um, you know he's definitely been a, you know a, a massive addition to the dressing room as well. Like you said, you know having that bit of experience, you know. A British lad that's played a lot of games in the Championship, he knows exactly what it's about, and um, you know he's a leader. He's obviously been, you know, captain at, at previous clubs, so um, you know he's he's got that sort of authority to to lead by example, and you know I think he's been outstanding. Um, you know he's got a lot of credit, and it's it's been deserved because um, you know he's played a massive part for us this season. And the last few games, you've obviously had to um, play alongside Andrew Omabamadeli, a lad who's come through our academy system, and you know from outside looking in he's 
been looking really comfortable as part of the back two alongside you. Just what have you made of how he's settled in and what is he like off the pitch? And give our fans a little insight into that. It's you know it's it's tough because long, young lads come in and and, uh, and and train me and it's it's always difficult to really judge them until you see them on the big pitch until you see them um, you know on a, on a match day and sometimes lads will come in and train me and you'll think they're a world beater but then you get them on the big pitch and they get lost a little bit yep. but saying that other lads are the complete opposite um, you know lads don't really look unbelievable in training but then you you get them on the big pitch on a, you know, on a Saturday and it's 11 v 11 and they really come into their own and um, you know I think Andrew's done unbelievably well you know considering his age and considering he sort of got chucked in a little bit because of injuries and stuff and you know what's really impressed me is sort of his just his temperament and I think I've said it before about the young lads here I don't know what they do or how they do it but they always just seem so calm and so you know composed and ready to take their chance when it when it comes along and you know, I think he's done that at, at such a young age um, you know he's definitely got a, you know, a bright future ahead of him. Do you think it's helped Andrew in terms of the fact that you've got other players who have come through the academy in the team already when you look at Max how well he's settled in and he's gone on to make 100 plus appearances Todd at the other end of the pitch do you think it's helped Andrew in terms of settling into um, championship football yeah no I think so I mean obviously that's part of the club and part of what happens here is you know the young lads um, you know, if they do well they'll get they'll get a chance um, and it obviously helps them having lads here that he knows as well in the dressing room um, but I go back to what I said before, you know, there's no sort of egos in the dressing room. You know, everybody's, um, you know, working together and pulling in the same direction. That's a big part of it. You know, as soon as Andrew had trained with us for however long it was and got to sell into our dressing room, um, you know, he was a, he was part of the group and he was part of, um, you know, working hard together to, to improve and, you know, showed that when he's been on the pitch. And on a personal level for yourself, I was looking at a couple of stats. I think it's the most appearances you've made in a season since 2015-16. So given obviously the last couple of seasons have been interrupted with injury quite a bit, you must be delighted with how obviously you've played so many minutes and you've managed to get a consistent run of games this season and it's paid off. Yeah, no, definitely. Obviously for me, it's that's what I've sort of been looking for for the last couple of years to to get in the team and, and play every week, really. You know... Um, you know, being a captain, you want to you want to be on the pitch with the lads. You want to sort of be pulling your weight. Um, so no, it's definitely it's definitely been a good season for me personally to to be on the pitch as much and get a good run of games. And I think especially as as a centre half, a lot of your games on sort of timing and positioning and reading the game, and that only comes by with playing games. So um, you know, I think that's that's helped me massively to. Sort of get that run of games and and find a level of consistency with performances as well. And you got a second place in the player of the season vote as well. Um, you must be delighted with where your game's at at the minute going into having another crack at the Premier League. No, definitely. Of course, like I said, I knew I always believed in in myself um, in terms of if I got a run of games and I could get back to um, you know a, a decent level of performance. So you know I'm happy with this season and. Obviously, it, I've given myself another, you know, crack at um, playing the Premier League. So, no, happy. Yeah, and obviously going into the Premier League next season, there's a lot of lads who were involved last year, and obviously the disappointment of getting relegated straight away. Do you sense already there's, you know, that hunger in the dressing room, and all the lads are looking ahead to next season and proving maybe the doubt is wrong and trying to show that we, you know, we've got the capabilities to stay there next season. No, I think I think the hunger's always there. I think the lads. I'll always be hungry, but I think this time around we've maybe got a little bit more experience. Um, you know, the, the club as a whole, but you know, especially the lads that are on the pitch. Um, you know, we did have a lot of young lads. It was a sort of first time playing the Premier League, um, so no, it'll definitely help. We'll, we'll definitely, uh, you know, be better equipped this time around. And just a final couple of questions on you know what's potentially an exciting summer for yourself if. Um, potential inclusion in the Scotland squad. Obviously, it could be a historic summer. Obviously, Scotland haven't been involved in a major tournament for quite a while. So, for you to potentially be involved in that, that must give you a lot of excitement headed into it. No, of course. Um, you know, it's it's been frustrating for me over the last sort of two or three years not not playing for Scotland because um, you know I feel like if I was fit, I'd have been involved a lot more and you know got a, you know a few more caps under my belt. Um, but 
and it wasn't to be and that's the way it is, that's the way football works sometimes so you know it was really uh, pleasing for me the last um, international break to get away and you know get some game time um, you know leading into the Euros in the summer so you know hopefully I can be involved, hopefully I can be part of that and um, you know really looking forward to it. Obviously it's a massive thing for the, the country as a whole because it's been so long since I've been here so um, it's a chance for the lads to, to go and do ourselves proud. Yeah and obviously going into that previous um, international break I think it was fir your first appearances since 2018 so did you sense like any differences in terms of the atmosphere around the group because obviously there would have been a massive high obviously because yeah. the last break they quali uh, sealed qualification for the Euro so did you sense any differences in terms of the atmosphere and the setup as well? Yeah no definitely I think since um, since the last time I've, I was involved I think the setup as a whole has improved um, little things that that people probably don't, um, you know, even think about the facilities, the the food, the travel, stuff like that. Um, you know, makes a massive difference, and things like that, like that, have improved. Um, and obviously, the lads are doing well, so there's got to be a better atmosphere. Um, you know, I know most of the lads anyway um, from being away, you know, in the past. But no, it it, it looks good at the minute, and um, you know, the lads have done really well to qualify for for a major tournament, so um, you know they deserve it. Yeah, there's obviously a bit of time until the final squad is announced, but do you feel like you've put yourself in the best possible position to get a call up given how successful you've been this season? No, well I think, um, you know, I know myself, if I'm playing at club level and I'm playing consistently and I've got a, a good chance of getting called up, so um, fingers crossed. Yeah, but looking forward to a little break between now and then hopefully um, resting up, because obviously it's been a very intense season. Yeah, no, I think so. I think we've got, um, a couple of weeks before we meet up for a sort of pre-camp so I think I'll give myself four or five days just to relax and uh, and then get back at it so we're you know ready to go for the Euros um, and then hopefully the boss will give me a bit of time after that.